Hi guys, my name is Riley Schroeder. Welcome to my channel about all things living in Houston. I'm a local Houston real estate agent. I was also born and raised in the area, so it's safe to say I know Houston like the back of my hand. So whether you're just considering a move to Houston, your job's relocating you here, or you already live in the area and you're just trying to find a spot that best aligns with your lifestyle, I've got you covered. So be sure to hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell to be notified of my upcoming videos. I do drop them weekly. And do me a favor, hit that like button as well. So anyone who's like you, trying to figure out what it's like to eat, sleep, live, play, and breathe in Houston, Texas, can find my videos as well. I have helped over a hundred people since 2019 move to Houston from out of state, and I would love to help you too. The only way I can do that is if you reach out. So this number connects you directly to me. Give me a call, shoot me a text, or shoot me an email. Whichever way you're most comfortable, day, night, weekend, I'm always here and I have your back when moving to Houston, Texas. Here's the thing guys, moving in general is stressful, much less moving cross country, jumping from state to state. So today I'm gonna cover my top five tips to make moving to Houston, Texas super simple. So let's jump into it. My number one tip is start understanding the area. Houston is just huge. 9,000 plus square miles is what Houston Metro is. That's bigger than New York City. So we cover a lot of space. It's really important you start to understand the different spots, figure out what best aligns with your lifestyle. Do you wanna live in the burbs? Do you wanna live in the city? What's important to you about a community? Um, do you need to be concentrating on good schools? And what about commute time? How long are you comfortable sitting in the vehicle for? Um, all things to start thinking about. For example, a lot of people who are moving in from upstate, who have a family, really enjoy areas like Katy and the Woodlands and Cypress and Sugarland. Pearland is another great one, League City. Um, these all are, have great schools. You get good bang for your buck in terms of homes. Um, and they're very family friendly. Have a lot to do for families, have a lot of restaurants, have a lot of activities. And the commute time into downtown or the inner loop where most businesses are isn't too bad. I personally have placed a lot of people moving in from out of state in the Katy area. A lot of them have younger kids. They're looking for the great schools. They wanted newer homes. Katie is great for this. It is newer. It has been the number one most popular growing city in Texas for a couple years now. Um, so Katie is a great place to be. It's very family friendly. Um, my aunt lives there with two small children. They have a Facebook group. She lives in Cross Creek Ranch. Fantastic newer community. They're actually still building new homes out there. Um, they have a Facebook group where they're um, selling furniture, asking for help with kids or dogs, or, hey, do you know any good contractors, things like that. So it's a great community and really just vibrant. It has a lot going on, a lot to do across the board. Sugarland is another one that's a little south of Katy. That's a great place to be for families. They also have great schools. Sugarland's a little bit more established than Katy. The homes are a little bit older for the most part. You're gonna see like, the more mature trees, homes with a, a ton of character. Some have been updated, some have, some have been not. So if that's what you're looking for, Sugarland may be a better bet for you. The Woodlands is another really great place to be for families or singles alike. Um, Pearland as well, Lake City has some great schools. So start learning the suburbs, start learning, uh, start thinking of commute times in terms of where your job will be. There's a lot of jobs in the energy quarter. There is a lot in Green Bay Plaza. There's a lot of businesses downtown. Um, and then we also have the med center. So a lot of people in the med center, like living in Pearland and Manville, that's gonna be an easier drive versus if you worked in the med center and lived in Conroe or the Woodlands, you'd be commuting a lot further. If, you li if your work is going to be in the energy corridor, it's likely that somewhere Memorial or Briar Forest or Katy is gonna be easiest for you to commute. Cypress even, 
versus living down in League City, you're gonna travel a little bit further to get to work um, from there. So all things to start thinking about. If you're moving to Houston with the family, you've got a bigger budget and it's important to you to be closer to the city. Some places you might, might wanna consider are the Memorial area, River Oaks and Upper Kirby, the Heights, Oak Forest, and West University. So all of these places you're gonna spend two to three to four plus million, depending on what your criteria is. You'll get a backyard, a beautiful single family home, um, and you're gonna be much closer to the city. A lot of these ta these places, um, aside from Memorial, you're, you're sending your kids to private school. So depending on your lifestyle, what's important to you, there is a spot for everyone. It just depends. If you're moving here, you're single or a young professional, a really great spot to be is the inner loop. So inside the loop, we have Midtown, Montrose, Upper Kirby, River Oaks, The Heights, Washington Avenue, Rice Village, Downtown, Edo, all terrific places as a young adult. These still have a lot of nightlife, tons of restaurants. You're gonna find a lot of people your age in these communities and a lot to do where you can either walk or take a very short Uber ride. I find a lot of professional, young professionals are looking for. So depending on your lifestyle, great places to be. If you're moving to Houston, looking for more of the rural farm life type atmosphere, we've got a lot of great smaller cities in the South that you may want to consider, even some in the North. So we've got places like Meadville, Texas. This is where I grew up. Um, lots of space in general very few restrictions in HOAs in terms of what you can put on your land. Um, and then we've got East Bernard, Wharton, and uh, El Campo, places like Sweeney in the South. These are all places where whenever you go to the grocery store, the small grocery store that the towns do have, you're gonna start to recognize the same people over and over. You'll get to know your neighbors. Um, most of those schools don't have a ton in the graduating class. So I graduated, I graduated with 150 people, and that was years ago. So it's growing a little bit, um, but very small high schools in general. Um, so it makes for a great small town kind of life. In the north areas, Magnolia, Montgomery, um, a little bit more expensive to live in those rural cities. Um, but still great spots to consider if that's the kind of lifestyle you're looking for. So overall, start understanding the lay of the land in Houston and considering how long you want your commute to be and things like that. Another thing to consider when thinking about the different areas of Houston is we have flood zones. And flood zones are not just near the coast. We have 10 bayous running throughout Houston. We've got two major lakes. So the closer you are to body of water, um, the closer you are to a flood zone. So we have three different types. We have a hundred year, 500 year, and in areas that don't have a flood zone at all. In each three of those zones, there are homes that are flooded, even when you're outside of a flood zone. So ask yourself how comfortable you are with a home that's been flooded. There's been clients of mine in the past who are fine with a home that flooded just during Hurricane Harvey in 2017. But if it flooded more than once, they're not okay with that. Um, so something to start thinking about. If you want a home that hasn't flooded at all, totally doable. Um, another thing to know about flood zones is if you're in a 100 year flood zone, that does require you to maintain flood insurance. As I've said, I'm going to recommend it no matter where you're at, just in case. Things are crazy around here, we get a lot of flooding events. Um, but the 100 year is the only one that's going to require it. The 500 year will not require it, out of flood zone will not require it, I'm still going to suggest it. And then the closer you are to that body of water determines how high or low your flood insurance is per year. So something to think about is the fact that we have flood zones in different areas. My second tip for making your move to Houston super easy is to schedule a visit. As I mentioned, Houston is just so big and we can talk for hours about the different parts of Houston. It's, it's difficult to get a lay of the land without actually seeing it though. So it would be a good idea for you to go ahead and schedule a trip. However, is it 100% necessary to make your move successful and stress-free? No. I am here to be your boots on the ground. As I've mentioned, I've done this a ton. 
I've also had a ton of people, the first time they're seeing the house they're moving into is on closing day or a week after closing day when they finally move here. So I am here to be your confidant, your boots on the ground. I am in very picky and you can, I have references as clients who moved in from out of state for this situation that I'd be happy to connect you to, um, but I'm picky. I'm gonna tell you what it smells like when we walked in, if there was clearly a smoker that lived there, I'm gonna let you know. I've also been in real estate and been staging for so long that I notice that I'm very nitpicky. I'm gonna notice like the built up uh, grime and hair on baseboards where if the home needs to be repainted. These are things I'm going to, to be upfront with you about. At the end of the day, my goal is to make it as stress-free as possible for you. And that comes with a lot of honesty. So you can assure you're getting that from me if you decide you don't have the budget or the time to actually come to Houston and check it out, I will be here for you the whole time. Overall, I want you to feel confident that I have your back if for some reason you don't have the budget or the time or just the willingness to come check out Houston on your own. I want you to feel confident that I can be your boots on the ground and do all the dirty work for you. Tip number three is I want you to start nailing down your criteria. And I'm not talking about the community and the location as we talked about in number one. I want, I'm talking about the actual home itself. So how many bedrooms and bathrooms are necessary? What's the square footage you're looking for? Do you want a pool? Do you absolutely not want a pool? What about the age of the home? Are you comfortable with a home that was built 30, 40, 50 years ago? Or would you prefer something that was built in the last three years? Or would you prefer something that has never been lived in? All of these things are great to start thinking about. I also want you to know the difference between your needs and your wants. When you're making these lists of all the things important to you about a home, go through it then and decide if my home doesn't have X, is that okay or is that a deal breaker? If it's a deal breaker, that's a need. If it's not a deal breaker, if it would be okay, if it has everything else except for this one thing, that would be considered a want. So I wanna know all of those things. However, we're gonna structure your home search around the needs. But the wants are the part that keep it fun, and I recognize that. So I wanna know those two. We're gonna be on the lookout for those. It's very likely we find those, um, but we need to know your needs to really structure that home search and have great success doing it. Tip number four, and that is knowing your buying power. So it's important to know, do you have a home to sell, sell in your current state? And if you do, are you contingent? Are you financially contingent? Do you have to sell that home in order to qualify to buy one in Texas? Or do you not? Can you buy first, make that transition, and then sell your home vacant? Um, you're gonna wanna get with a local lender and local to Houston is what I mean because the appraisals and the close time is much quicker when you do that. Lucky for you, I do have those connections. But you're gonna wanna know what you can afford in Houston. This is really gonna structure your home search. Knowing your budget will know what parts of Houston that puts you in and what parts of Houston that prices you out of. Another thing about Texas in general is we have property taxes. The state you're coming from might not. So depending on your property tax rate, this is going to affect your monthly mortgage payment. So another reason why it's good to go ahead and get with a local lender who knows the taxes and can get you your buying power. Tip number five, and by far the most important one is you gotta reach out. I'm just keeping it real with you. As I've said, I've helped so many people move into Houston from out of state. Beyond that, I've covered so many parts of Houston. I know them all so well. There are a lot of realtors that really niche down in their community and that's fantastic when you're selling a home, especially. But when you're buying, you're coming from out of state, you're not sure where you wanna be, you need an agent who knows every part of Houston, and that's me. I luckily started my career on the number one team in all of Houston at the time, um, and I was covering from Huntsville, down to Galveston, out to Katy and Brookshire, down to Meadville, out to Kingwood, Cleveland. I was covering it all. So I can help you figure out and narrow down the best places for you and your family and your lifestyle. So that is so important. Beyond experience, I have the connections. I've got local appraisers, inspectors, contractors, lenders, whatever you need, even after you close on your home. So many people have reached out being like, hey, I need someone to come help me build out a patio. I've got them. I have connections for you before, during, and after the transaction things that are really important. I've also got 
a great referral network. If you are selling your home and you don't have an agent yet, I've got a list of incredible agents in every area that I can connect you to. Beyond that, we're gonna work together, me and your agent, whether I know them or, or you introduce us, um, that is something that's very important to me is building that relationship with your agent and making sure that our priority is getting you to Texas as stress-free free and smooth as possible. So if you need um, a lease back at your current home as a buffer to move to Texas, we're gonna work together to get that for you. Whatever's most important for you, and maybe price, and maybe timing, whatever it is, we're going to work together to do that. And here's the thing. If you're just considering a move, you're still a year, two years out. You don't even know if you want to be in Houston or you're moving tomorrow. It does not matter. Reach out. Let's just start a conversation. I, above all, care about being a resource for you. That is simply it. Even if you decide to not move to Houston, I just want to have your back. I want to be able to answer questions. A lot of people don't have that. They don't have a go-to realtor that knows the market very well that they can ask questions to. So above all, that's what I want to be for you. And in order to do that, you have to reach out. So as I've said previously, give me a call, shoot me a text, whatever you are most comfortable with, whatever is easiest for you. I will work around your schedule. The first thing we'll do is schedule a Zoom call, get face to face. I just want to learn about what's bringing you to Texas, why you're considering Houston, um, and what would be important for you in the home. We'll structure your home search about that. I'm also going to go through the entire buying process with you from start to finish. So I want to set proper expectations. I want to get you familiar with some of the terms we're using, especially if you've never bought before. Um, so that you don't feel so blindsided and so confused. That also eases a lot of stress during the process. When it comes to making an offer, I will walk you through not just the most appropriate terms, um, but the way we can get you the most deal, depending on the community and your budget, wherever we're at. Um, I'm always going to be looking out for your best interest. So reach out, guys. Call, text, email. I can't wait to hear from you. And until my next video, I'll see you later.